Hey team, welcome back to my channel. In this video, we're going to look at the left join operation of link. Below in the common area is a table of contents if you want to skip around. Let's do this. You can clearly see there are two objects, the purchase order object and customer object. And you can see that the purchase order object is on the left and the customer object is on the right. Now let's read the definition. The left join will return all rows from the left object, even if there are no matches in the right object. As you can see here, the second column in the purchase order object, customer ID, links to the first column in the customer object. The line highlighted with yellow means customer ID 3 does not have a match in the customer table. Here you can see the results of the left join. As the left join stated, all rows from the left are added to the results. Notice all of the order ID values are in the result window. Now, when matching up the customer ID, notice there was not a three value. In the result window, notice the customer ID has a label null, which means the absence of value, while the rest had values from the matching process. In this example, we're gonna go get a list of purchase orders, then we're gonna go get all of our customers, and then I'm gonna take our orders and I'm only gonna pick the finished ones. Let's make sure that we understand our inputs from lines 12 to 16. In this data, we have two columns that are of interest. We have the customer ID and the status. So notice this customer ID has an integer value for the customer number. Notice here, customer one, three, five, seven, and nine. And then notice here on the status, I'm using an enum. And then enum has a value of just ordered, finished, finished, canceled, and finished. And that is the data for get purchase order. Now our next line that we need to investigate is line 13, get all customers. Now notice on get all customers, we have customer one, two, four, five, seven, eight, nine. So there is no three and there is no six. So that is our customers. Now immediately after we get our original set, what we're gonna do is we're going to limit our orders, remember we had five of them, and now I only want to see the orders that are finished. Now notice here, this is of type enum, and you can see here our order status type, I'm gonna make it look like an integer, and then we have ord, ordered, picked, shipped, finished, and canceled. Each of them have a unique value. So if the order status is finished, then I'm gonna place that order into my finished variable. So only the finished. Now you understand our input. Let's look at the actual query. Let's begin from PO in finish orders. And then we're going to join with the customers from all customers on the customer ID from the purchase order table equals the customer customer ID. Remember, in our purchase orders, customer ID values 1, 3, 5, 7, and 9. Joining these two tables actually creates a third table called join group. And then just like, so this is a table, right? And finished order is a table, and all customers a table. Now we have join groups as a table. So just like we say from PO, for this table, now I'm gonna say from cart of joined default if empty. Now I need to know this because we know some of the purchase orders do not have customers. Now what's gonna happen is I'm gonna come down here and then create a, an anonymous type. And I'm gonna get the order ID, the status, and the customer name. Now remember I told you that we don't have all the customer IDs. Okay, now we have the data, F10. I'm gonna loop over that, two, three, and let's take a look at my output. Now my output is telling me that, notice they're all finished, but error, three is not in customer table. 
And that's what's known as a left join. We still got the record two, purchase order two, but we did not get the customer. And that is what's known as a left join. And there you have it, team. An example for the left join. In the second example, we're going to be using the same object purchase order, but this time we're going to be using another object called details. So this is a one to many relationship. Let's look at the data. So notice in my purchase order object, I have one, two, three, four, five. I have five objects. And the point of interest here is one of the objects was canceled. Now it wasn't canceled in the purchase order object, but in the detail, Notice that there's no detail information for order ID 4. I still have it up here, order ID 4, but I don't have it down here. Now, because I want to see all my orders, I would need to do a left join so I can see all that data. So, so now we know our inputs. Now we know our query. From our last example, we understand that we had to do an on to actually join the order table and the order line table. And that went into a joined group. Then I said from card on that joined group, just like I said from PO on orders, I say from card on join group, default if empty. Then when I come down here to create my anonymous type, notice I'm testing is cart null for item? And if it is null, the item name will be empty string. Now because line ID is an integer, I'm just putting the value null in there. And at the very end, I'm creating a list on query and then we're going to be looping over that and seeing the output. Let's run this and I will uh, step through this program for you. Let's do it. Let's go get the items from the purchase order, F11, and get this return. And now we're going to go get the details. Notice that, that uh, order 4 was missing. Now we're going to do our query. Now when we do our query, notice that I had to check that cart to see if it was null. And notice my output. Let's go look for item four. Notice item four says name is empty string and line ID is null. And I'll meet you on line 37. Here's our output. Notice order one, order two, order three, order four. Didn't have any other data on the join and five has two. So with these two examples, you see the key part here on line 22, and then how I look for the anonymous type null. I test to see if that is null, and I do something appropriately. And that's example two, team. And there you have it, team, the left join. It is a very popular method. In fact, very popular. You, you have to know this. I hope this video gave you some insight into the left join. And if you have any questions about this video, please leave a question below in the comment section. Now, all you have to do is do a little practice and I'm sure you will master this. Below in the comment section, I have provided the source code for your review and if you wanted to use that in your own program for testing. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving me a thumbs up, typing in a comment for myself and other users, and if you'd like to subscribe to my channel, that would be cool. Okay team, that's all I have. See you back in my next video. Have a great week.